It's a millionaire theme hour. We're talking with real millionaires so we can show you how to be millionaires. In the process of doing that, we're defeating a lot of the mythology around the wealthy. Number one piece of mythology, you inherit the money is how you become wealthy. 88%, that's almost 9 out of 10 millionaires, and there's 9.4 million of them, started with nothing. They didn't, did not inherit money in order to become a millionaire. Uh, mythology number two, you would be a athlete, an actor, or a rock star in order to be a millionaire. No, less than 1% of millionaires fall in those categories all added together. The number one category of millionaires is small business owners, 32%. The number two category of millionaires is professionals, and that's white-collar executive types, including but not limited to engineers, doctors, lawyers, architects, those kinds of folk. But it also includes a CEO of a major company or a, a CFO of a major company, those kinds of things. So working a job uh, of that type or owning your own business. Uh, and so I've had one of each this hour. Uh, mythology number three, you have to be brilliant to be a millionaire. Nope. Tom Stanley's book, uh, you need to be smart but you, and wise, but you don't need to be brilliant. Um, Tom Stanley's book, The Millionaire Mind, uh, he came up with 38 correlating statistical items that indicate millionaire status or multimillionaire status. And then he ranked them in order of uh, most often shown statistically to least often shown. Out of the 38, the least of all 38 that he measured as an indicator was GPA. Your GPA is almost never an indicator. Now, you do need to get up in the threes, high twos at a minimum. I mean, you can't be running around with Fs and Ds and do this stuff, okay? Because that's an indication you're just not bright or you're not disciplined. But... But this idea that somehow you have to have 4.2, you have to be a genius child in order to be a millionaire is ridiculous. Oh, and millionaire myth number three. Number four. Number four. All wealthy people are evil, and they got all their money by cheating. Now, same list of character qualities when listed as in, that indicate the ability to build wealth and keep wealth. Number one character quality. Extreme fanatical integrity, being honest with all people. Most millionaires got there by being more honest than the average cat, not less honest. That's statistical data. That's not your brother-in-law spouting liberal pablum. That's real data. So you got to really, I mean, you have to stop and realize that there's an agenda with this stupidity that's destroying people's reasonableness about success. Carolyn is with us in Allentown, Pennsylvania, another one of our millionaires. What's your net worth, Carolyn? Hi, Dave. Hi. Uh, our net worth is about 1.25. Cool. What's it invested in? Our house is worth about a half a million dollars. We have about 650000 in our retirement. We have $45,000 in a college fund for our daughter. She's mm -hmm. eight. We have saved $25,000 for our next car. How, how old um, are you guys? We're 43 years old. Whoa, young millionaires. Good for you. <laughs> and what's your average income been through your working lifetime? Um, we've probably averaged about 80000 What do you guys do for a living? What's your career? My husband, Yep, my husband is an electrician, mm -hmm. and my background is nursing. Um, I work for a health education company now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what are your degrees in? So I, um, I have my undergraduate, I have a bachelor's of science in nursing, and then I have a master's degree in health psychology. Mm -hmm. And my husband, my husband didn't go to college. Okay. And your GPA? Uh, my undergrad was 2.9, and my um, graduate was 3.8. Cool. And how much debt have you guys used to uh, cause this net worth to be here? Uh, we, we did buy our first house when we were first married at 22. It was $94,000, and we didn't have any money. I just about died. I mean, I threw mm -hmm. up practically. But we paid that off in four years. And uh, that motivated us to just 
stay out of debt. So, so you've not borrowed any. A, you didn't have any other money. You didn't have student loans. Uh, we ha- my my husband didn't go to college, so I, I paid my way through college, mm-hmm. and um, and so we didn't really have. We had like two thousand dollars to pay off when we got married. How, and we how many right how away. many new cars have you bought? Uh, two. Okay. Like our last car, we paid for in cash, and it was used, and that's the way we're going mm-hmm. going forward. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you inherit money? We, the only, I wouldn't say we inherited money, but I worked really hard for a startup company, and when they went public, I did get um, from the stock, I got $100,000, and that was about 10 years ago, and we paid off our mortgage now at that, that time. But that's not an inheritance, yeah, that's just it your, wasn't, no, it was part of your compensation inherit. package, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was All good. Right. <laughs> and and uh, what part did giving play? Yeah, when we were first, we got married at 22. We didn't have any money to give, but we we gave a lot of our time. We volunteered a lot. But as mm-hmm. the years have gone on, um, it's re- been really easy to just give things away. And then, yeah, we give we give at least 10 percent of our of our money away now, and it's fun now because we we have certain causes that are important to us, and we can we can give to them. So yeah. that's a good thing. What's the most expensive jeans you buy? <laughs> I buy all my clothes from a consignment store. I would say my average pair of jeans is about $4.50. That's ridiculous. Go get you some good jeans. (laughs) That's fabulous. All right, Carolyn, you told me twice that a couple of these things, like buying the house and so forth, scared you. So fear was kind of in the picture as maybe yeah. a, maybe as a positive motivator i don't know T- tell the younger carolyn how she should do this and that she can do this the younger version yeah. of yeah <laughs> i would say try to get more sleep and stop worrying so much because <laughs> mm-hmm. it will work out mm-hmm. um and and to say thank you to your husband mike mm-hmm. <laughs> gosh he's such a hard worker mm-hmm. he um, what, 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 what were the principles that caused you guys to be millionaires? If yeah. you're talking, if you're talking to the younger you, do this, yeah. do this, don't do this, don't do that. I would say um, work very, very hard when you're young because you're going to get t- more tired when you get older and you don't have the energy to do the overtime. But those early years, pick up as many hours as you can and. And just work and work and work and hang on to your marriage. It's a roller coaster, and then eventually things will calm down, and you'll have more time for everything. And you won't need to be working so hard. Yeah, and it works out. Yeah, yeah, it works out. So, were you steady in your investing, or has most of that been in the last few years? Uh, we're, we're steady, um, but we we definitely have been able to invest more since we've now we make more. We don't pay anybody any, you know. Has, it, occur- has it occurred so. to you that you're only 43, and so by the time you're 63, you're probably going to be worth $10 million? I've looked at those calculators with disbelief. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared about that. I, we'll be fine. I know we'll be fine. Yeah. It's a comfort. I can sleep well at night. Yeah, you're on your way. There's no doubt. If you keep the same... Uh, without the same work ethic, I mean, crazy amounts of work, but just if you just keep the same disciplines in your financial side of your life, that's where this is headed in 20 yeah. years. If you don't do much else, if you just keep control of what you're doing, and uh, that's where the math will take you. So very, very impressive. Thank you so much for being a great American success story. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's very, very neat. <laughs> Thank you.